next on the College Rugby Wrap-Up, the NCR All-Star Extravaganza Weekend, plus Rugby New York General Manager Steve Lewis. Rugby Wrap-Up brought to you in part by Sheehy Auto Stores. It's easy at Sheehy. The Pig and Whistle, the world's best rugby pub, and Lean and Limber, stretching your way to a healthier lifestyle. Hello again and welcome back to the College Rugby Wrap-Up. Matt McCarthy in New York City and my colleagues, Mr. Colby Marshall and Mr. Zach Lanning. Not to be confused with Josh Recio, who could not come on with us today. But guys, I haven't seen you since last year and you're all grown up. Look at you. You're handsome. You're all, you haven't changed at all. Colby got a new mustache. I got a new mustache. Colby's got a new mustache. I'm bringing that into 2022. <laughs> and a little scruff. Zach, I think you should shave that whole thing. That's just my two cents. Hawkeye viewers will notice I'm a little trimmed from uh, 2021. Uh, for the holidays, I cut it down a little bit. But now I'm thinking of growing way out as, you know, now that I'm a full-time Mainer, I'm down east uh, in Maine permanently. I'm thinking I'll keep it uh, going forward. You going to go with the Ulysses S. Grant or the uh, Abe Lincoln? I think I'm thinking somebody more like in this century, not so much like old kind of uh, Civil War, you know, American political heroes. Um, but I, I probably find a I'll find a find a beard mentor uh, from this this side of the millennium. James Harden. James Harden. I you know that would be that's my my idol there. The beard. You don't get a better beard than that. All right. Okay. Maybe you'll All start right. doing most in, interesting man in the world commercials as well. You know. I look. They're looking for somebody. I'll, I'll send them my reel. All right, you do that. You do that. In the meantime, why don't we get on with this? Uh, we've got the NCR, the National Collegiate Rugby All-Star uh, teams convening in Houston at the home of the Sabercats. We have the PacWest Grizzlies, the Midwest Barbarians, the Southwest Bears, the Great Lakes Thunderbirds, the Mid-Atlantic Sharks, the Tri-State Vikings, the New England Independents in red, and the New England Independents in white. And we've also got some news that we'll talk about with the Women's All-Stars the uh, regions and coaches. Let's let's start with breaking down some of these teams because th this is going to be covered by CBS Sports Network, which is very cool. And it's a great way to see some of the talent that is out there on the American landscape right from your home. And we're going to help you with that by breaking down some of these teams. And Colby, why don't you give us some players to watch from your Great Lakes Thunderbirds? Yeah, for the Great Lakes Thunderbirds, you know, this is a team that's going to be coached by John Harley of Marion University. And on this team, he's going to have a player that he's very familiar with, and that's J.D. Farrell, who played at Marion this past year. The sophomore flanker, you know, he's listed at 6'2", 6'3", a true physical specimen at 210 pounds. Uh, he was actually recruited by several top wrestling programs around the country, but opted for rugby instead. And it seems to have been a good choice. You know, he's very aggressive, uh, has a lot of energy, and is a beast at the breakdown so he's going to be a guy that i'm sure john harley is going to know you know exactly how to utilize him on this team so that's going to be a fun dynamic to watch another guy to watch on this team is rua karimazando from wheeling you know he's a loose forward who can also play lock he's listed around six two six three and has these really long arms that are going to make him a menace to opposing lineouts and lastly another guy to watch on this team is going to be patello batuve the freshman center from Adrian College. You know, he's a kid from the San Francisco Bay Area, known for his fancy hair styles and, you know, contagious personality, but he also is a bona fide stud on defense on the rugby pitch and shows great energy and enthusiasm on offense as well. So he's gonna be an exciting player to watch. He's one of those players that caught my eye down in the uh, the, the national championships down in Houston for NCR. He's a very, very dynamic player. Uh, Zach, why don't you tell us a little bit about the New England squads? Yeah, guys. So New England actually has two teams in this one. Uh, New England, obviously a hotbed for college talent in the country. A lot of really good programs in the area. A lot of talented players coming out of that region. Uh, so they'll have the New England independents both in red and in white, um, as well as New England independents blue in the Rising Stars Challenge, which we'll get into a little bit later. Uh, but I can start us off just talking about the New England independents in red, coached by Ed Tuberty at Northeastern. Um, and assisted by Tom Clark from Mystic River, uh, a solid program. They have a lot 
lot of guys coming out of Mystic River uh, who are playing in this in this game as well. Um, the number one player I have my eye on from the New England Reds is Connor Robinson, who's a hooker for Boston College. He's going to be one of the captains of the New England Red. Uh, he's 5'10", 235 pounds, and he has signed a one-year developmental contract with the New England Free Jacks. Uh, that'll start, you know, pretty much as soon as he gets home, pack, unpacks his bags from Houston and heads right into camp with them. Uh, he's a native New Englander and he's really excited to join the team. Uh, and Tom Kinley, the performance director at, for the Free Jacks, said that, you know, he's a solid core role operator, very diligent, and he has a nuggety hooker build, which I thought was a hilarious uh, phrase. But you can see that with that 5'10", 235 pound frame. Uh, so he, they think he's a guy who might surprise them. Look for him to maybe surprise us uh, in these matches as well coming up this weekend. That that is the perfect hooker prototype, you know. That five ten two thirty five. That's like a, it's like a, a little bowling ball. Not a little bowling ball. It's a big bowling ball running up and down. A very the big sizable ball. Yeah, I would not want to tackle a five ten two thirty five pound Connor Robinson. Uh, not many people did this year at Boston College either. So we'll see if he can. That'll translate to the MLR. What else you got? Connor Robinson's co-captain in this one uh, for the New England Independence, the red team, is Mike Weir, the fly half of Dartmouth. Uh, Dartmouth had a really strong season, really surprising seasons uh, in some people's eyes. You know, they were the reigning Ivy League champ, um, but not many expected them to, to be as strong this season. They came out and beat a really, really strong Army side in October. Mike Weir was a huge part of that victory as well as their strong season. His kicking game is really what he brings to the table as well as his leadership, but his kicking was, was on point all year, especially in that game. He was hitting penalty kicks, conversions, and even a drop goal in that win over Army. So Mike Weir, been a, a rugby star, rising star for some time now. He was a USA U20s player in 2019, Atlanta Sevens captain uh, throughout high school. He was even a golf rugby high school 2017 player of the year. Uh, so, you know, his career is kind of coming to a fold here. Uh, he's also a pretty smart guy, uh, Matt and Colby. He was a double major in economics and quantitative social sciences or Whoa. QSS for the layman. So he could tell you how many Twitter followers you have along with your um, algorithms on Facebook? Yeah, it's, it's hard to uh, zero divided by zero. I think it's still zero. I'm not a math guy, but. Uh, All right. OK. All right. And <laughs> that was the that was the red, right? Just a couple more names on the red uh, before, you know, we, we move along. Uh, Matt Gash Gilder, the eight slash flanker from Endicott College. He is is a physical specimen, 6'1", 215. The try scoring machine at Endicott this year and a real leader on the pitch. Uh, and I mentioned him. He's going to be a great player to watch but also to pivot into a player that I just want to bring up personally, Endicott lost the NCR Northeast Regional Championship to Holy Cross, my Holy Cross Crusaders. Uh, Matt Gash Gilder was named the, the, or won the Heart and Soul Award for that tournament uh, based off of his play, but they still lost to Holy Cross. And a big part of that, Jack Swords is on this red team as well. He is a prop for Holy Cross, uh, named to the all championship team for his performance in the Cohen Cup tournament, um, despite the fact that Holy Cross did end up losing to Christendom. Uh, but watch out for Jack Swords as well. Uh, both he and Matt Ash Gilder put aside their differences playing on the same team. And he's got that genetic rugby thing going, coursing through his veins, that Jack Swords, doesn't he? Yes, yes. Uh, Kevin Swords was a great player for the Eagles, obviously, and a star at Holy Cross as well. So following in his uh, familial footsteps here. All right, Colby, why don't you walk us through the um, the Pac West Grizzlies? Yes, sure, Matt. So for the Pac West Grizzlies, you know this is a side that's going to be coached by Jeremy Ognell and Scott Brakin from Claremont, and they're going to be highlighted by a few players: Jacob Jenkins, uh, wing from CSU Maritime, an absolute speedster for them. He runs a four five forty, and you can expect him to finish a lot of tries for this team. Marlon Van Week is a fly half from New Mexico Tech. That's going to be a player to watch. He's a small guy, but is supposedly very strong. So I can't wait to see what he does in this team. 330. He's benching 330, 330. and squatting 440 in his max squat. At 175, that is extremely impressive. I'm not maybe not as good as my, you know, max <laughs> max reps, but um, I'll give it to him. That's pretty impressive. And I think it's Van Van Wyk, or I'm not, but we'll we'll double check Van it. Either Wyke. way, we're going to know his name after this tournament. That's for sure. Oh, for sure. I, I would assume so. And last but not least, Trevor Ulickney is a loose head lock. That's going to be a player to watch on this team as well. You know, if you look at what position he plays on the Oregon Institute of Technology website, it just says the man. It doesn't even have a position labeled. So I guess you can expect him to do a little bit of everything. Uh, for this team come come uh, tournament time. But um, 6'5", 280, really seems like a strong kid. Can't wait to see what he does as well on this side. 
Gentlemen, hold that thought. We have to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Looking for your next vehicle? With She's Easy Search, choose from over 3,000 new and used vehicles. Shop, trade, or buy online or in store. We make it easy with our award winning service. It's easy at Sheehy. Sheehy.com. Hey, for fans in the tri-state New York area or players that want to get some notice, there's a 2022 College Fair and Rugby Combine from Rugby, New Jersey on Sunday, February 13th at the Middletown Sports Complex. Check out NewJerseyRugby.LeagueApps.com slash store. That's NewJerseyRugby.LeagueApps.com slash store. And we are back. All right, now let's turn it over to Matt. Matt, why don't you tell us about the Midwest Barbarians? Sure, I'd be happy to. We got coaches Joe Lippett, Iowa Central, Hamish McCallion out of Iowa Central, Jeremy Kachuba from Minnesota Duluth, and Tyler Selleck out of St. Scholastica. Guys, Grant Steger is a lock out of St. Scholastica, which is just a great name, right? I mean, that's the whole point of school. You're going to, but you're taking it up a level. 6'3, 220. Benches 305, squats 495. He can run a 40 in 4.8 at that size. So that's impressive. NFL tight end uh, fans are, are have their eyes on him. He's on the list as an option in the developing All-Stars. Second-year rugby player, played football prior, brings a lot of physicality and fitness. He's hard to bring down when at full steam, and we talked about that steam. Cormac Gallagher, a wing fullback, Marquette. 5'8", 180, great kicker, great decision maker with ball in hand, and dynamic backline player. And finally, Josh Napora, primarily primarily a number eight, but also a 2, 6, 7, 12, so he can play anywhere on the pitch. He's one of those guys. He's a rugby player and an athlete. University of Nebraska, Omaha, benches 345, squat 435, and that's just when he wakes up. That's before he gets warmed up. So this is another squad, another couple of players that are going to make this thing an exciting day. Uh, Zach, uh, Zach, did you give us the New England white team yet? Yeah, there's the New England Independence. It'll be the white team in this one. Uh, Stephen Diamantopoulos from UMass Lowell, assisted by Matt Charest from also UMass Lowell and Alex Broussard from Tufts. Uh, the two players to watch the, uh, on this one, it's a, it's a backline pairing from Norwich, guys. So Leo Clayberg, the fly half, and Travis Bartniski from the scrum half are going to be playing together, linking up here again on this all-star team. Uh, Leo Kleberg, this is a new position for him this year, playing fly half. He played flanker previously. He's from Belgium, represented Belgium during the European Championships in 2019. Uh, and he actually led Norwich and tries this past season with 17. Uh, he's added 31 conversions as well on top of that at a 50% success rate. Uh, so he's, he's definitely a player to watch and, and, you know, applying his trade at a position that is definitely valuable uh, in today's game, especially in the States that have a competent fly half. So uh, interesting that he could make an all-star game, you know, at a new position here like this. Um, and then also it's gotta be nice for him to have Bart Niski next to him at nine. Uh, he's a kid who's actually from Houston, from the area where he'll be playing in this all-star challenge. Hopefully some family can come out uh, and he's going to be a part of Houston Sabercast developmental pathway program as well. Their rugby HTX program. Grant Cole in that HTX program. Yeah. So another, you know, another prospective college player already kind of linking up with MLR and their pathway programs. Uh, which I'm sure many other players from this game will end up doing as well. Um, but uh, Bartniski scored the go-ahead try for Norwich against UNI in their third-place match in the NCR tournament. Uh, he was Rookie of the Year in college and also an Andrew Locke Most Valuable Player in high school. So, you know, he's got some trophies in his case as well. Um, yeah, just last name as well for, for the, the uh, New England Independent white team to look out for. Hudson Lee, the, the winger. He's also played fullback for Brown this year. He's academic all-Ivy, 5'10", 180, a great athlete. And a large part of the strong season that Brown had, we talked earlier about Dartmouth and all their success. Well, Brown beat them in the Ivy League championship. Yeah. Um, and you know, they just barely lost to Penn State uh, in the NCR championship bracket as well. So Brown had a really strong season, and Hudson Lee was a huge part of that. Colby, let's, uh, let's get back in the water and talk about the Mid-Atlantic Sharks. Yeah, let's talk about the Mid-Atlantic Sharks. This is a squad that's going to be coached by John Solomon and Steve Neighbors from Catholic University. A guy I like from this team is going to be Mark Tierney, a fly half from Georgetown University. 
mainly because of how well Georgetown played in the fall. They only lost one game during the regular season and made it all the way to the D2 National Championship where they lost in the regional title game of that tournament to Norwich. But nonetheless, they still had a great year. And I'm really anxious to see what Mark Kearney can do uh, from the fly half position uh, coming from such a good program. Other notable players to watch from this team are Brian Arnold, a fullback from Indiana University of Pennsylvania, Chad Tiernan from Bucknell, and lastly, Lorenzo Lelli, a front and back row player from Thomas Moore. And then I'll chime in with the Southeast Bears. Head coach Nick Wittrow out of Belmont Abbey, assistant slash management. Tyree Reed out of Queens, assistant Gennaro Fasia out of UNC Charlotte, assistant Lauren Judkins out of Lee, and assistant Nick Prather out of Auburn. And they've got Chase Sisnevich, a scrum half from Queens out of Charlotte, that can squat 345, bench 225, but he's only six foot, 180 pounds, and he's a scrum half. Gotta like that. Then you've got Doyle Hedgepeth, a prop out of Queens University, again out of Charlotte, six foot, 245, bench 305, and squat 455, USA South, and a, two, a 2019 D2. National Championship, U23-2021, and USA Rugby invite. So keep an eye on him. And then finally, Garrett Newman, another prop. Auburn University, 5'9", 240. He could bench 345 as his max and squat 500 as his max. USA Division II National Champion, also MVP of that game. And what about the Tri-State Vikings, Colby? Yeah, for the Vikings, you know, they're going to be coached by Dave Chapman of Colgate. And similar to how John Harley is getting the opportunity to coach J.D. Farrell, who's his player uh, at Marion, Dave Chapman is going to get the chance to coach one of his players. And that's going to be Tommy McHale, who's going to be starting at fly half for this team, uh, for the Vikings. You know, Tommy McHale, Zach, he's a guy that me and you went back and forth about during the fall. Very young, promising fly half for the Raiders. Very high on him they were throughout the fall season. And uh, it's going to be interesting. I'm sure Dave Chapman is going to know exactly how to utilize him on this team. So that'll be a fun dynamic to watch as well. Fordham's lock, John Lally, uh, is another Liberty player on this squad. He made first team all Liberty Conference from the fall 2021 season. And lastly, my man, Jack Brandis from Iona, the lock. I mean, who could forget Jack's five try performance against Syracuse in the Gales home season finale? You know, he's a guy, fun fact, can also squat 800 pounds. Is that guys, fake? So is that is that fake squat news? I don't, I don't news. know about that. Zach. I think that's fake squat news. That's I, fake that's... squat news. Zach, 800? Yeah, I mean, I passed 800 a couple of years ago, so I think it's pretty realistic. You know, I'm up uh, probably plus, 1,000 plus at this point uh, just as warm-up. So I believe it. I believe right. it 100%. Okay. Jack's got a little ways to go, but he's, he's working on it. And, fellas, as per the graphic that is now up on the screen, we have some news on the college women's sevens all-star front. Zach, why don't you walk us through it? Yeah, that's right, guys. So there is going to be a women's sevens all-star championship tournament for NCR here coming later in January. Also played at Aviva Stadium. Those matches will also be streamed on YouTube. The rosters have not been released yet for those matches, but they have announced the regions that will make up the, the tournament it's a combination this year between D1 schools and small college schools. So there are 16 teams total, eight from each, uh, and they'll all be competing for this championship uh, belt. I don't know if it's a belt. I'm just going to say that. That's about it for this segment, guys. But the whole point of this thing is for talent to get noticed. And in order for talent to get noticed, you need those people that need the talent to come down and notice. And we have one of those people, general manager or director of rugby, whatever you want to call him, Steve Lewis of Rugby New York, on the horn and we'll bring him in right after this if you're in new york city and want to watch some great rugby have some great food and some great times go to the world's best rugby pub the pig and whistle on west 36th street been blind since i was four and i've never seen a beer commercial or a beer label none of that stuff influences me i drink beer because of the taste and my beer is Pabst Blue Ribbon. It has a taste on the flavor. So what do you think's on the label? I think there's a, a naked woman riding on a unicorn, jumping over fire. Oh, that's good beer. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, and we're back with Mr. Stephen Lewis. The, the general manager slash director of rugby or something along those lines for Rugby New York. 
Uh, Colby and Zach, of course, here. Big fans, Steve. We're all big fans of, of the New York franchise, and particularly you. Well, you're perceptive, perceptive young men, and there's yourself. <laughs> fair enough. Fair <laughs> enough. I'll take that as less of a slight than usual. Uh, but, Steve, in all seriousness, NCR All-Star weekend, it's a big one, and there's going to be some talent there. We talked about it in the, in the previous segment. And you're a guy that's going to go down there and look for that talent. Absolutely. Um, it's a terrific initiative by National Collegiate Rugby. A lot of good work by Jeremy Tree, Steve Hyatt, those folks. And uh, I'm looking forward to it. So two days in Houston. Hopefully it's going to be warmer than uh, New York is right now. But um, eight teams, lots of young players, 65% of college rugby represented. So there's going to be some diamonds in the rough. And really that's what I'm there to sort of Get to know the players, get to know some of the coaches. I know, I know some of them, but get to know the other ones and just spend time sort of soaking up this, uh, this new event. Yeah, and, you know, th- there'll be some of your colleagues from across Major League Rugby down there as well. But, you know, you get a diamond in a rough. You get a guy like a Jackson Thebus, who was an Enscro Endicott College guy doing grad work there after he had played football at the University of Montana. Uh, you know, so you can find these guys, right? So what is your strategy going in? Do you look by position or do you just look by who you think might be the best talent? Yeah, I can be honest. Um, sometimes I just like going in blank. Uh, so that you just watch your game. You don't come in with preconceived ideas. But the reality is, you know, even over two days, I'm going to attend a couple of practices on Friday and then the game is Saturday and Sunday. You don't really have enough time to, to do that, run the rule sort of uh, blind coming in. So you kind of do have to rely on coaches a little bit. But um, right now I've got a initial lists, but I, I'm really open to persuasion. All right. Well, we're going to have to get that list from you and go over it with a fine tooth, fine tooth comb. I think I haven't had a comb in a while, so I don't know how to say. Zach, you got a question for him? Yes. Yeah, so can you talk a little bit? We, we've had on the show, you know, the, the challenges of scouting uh, college talent in a country that's as large as the United States. How important is it for yourself and then for other, you know, uh, general managers of, of teams in the MLR to have talent from all over the country kind of assembled in one location where you can get a good look at them as opposed to relying on film or word from other coaches that are in regions that are kind of far away? Well, you've hit the nail on the head. I mean, just getting players together in one venue over one weekend, is just uh, in a country this size, it's just uh, so valuable. Absolutely correct. You know, to, to, there's too much, actually too much rugby to watch completely. You have to kind of dare you. How dare you? Too much rugby. (laughs) There there is. Dare you, sir. You can't watch every every college team. So things like this, which filter, theoretically filter up the talent to another level is great. And then potentially get filtered again. So, yes, it's invaluable. Mr. Marshall. Steve, you mentioned the importance of getting to know the players uh, this weekend. Tell me the importance of getting to know them as people and as, you know, possible representations of a team um, and how that goes into maybe your scouting strategy and just dive into that a little bit. Yeah. Um, so the college pathway is, is one, is just one piece of the puzzle when you're putting together a team for an MLR squad for an MLR franchise, right? Now you have the draft and players come out of the draft and it's only one portion the reality is 70 to 80 percent of your team is going to come either from abroad or from established domestic players. However, in, in MLR, you have this um, dispensation. You're only allowed 10 foreign players on a match day roster of 23. So you have to have 13 U.S. or Canadians. So you always have to have um, sufficient numbers of domestic American and Canadian players fill in your roster. So to that end, you know, even though it's a, it's a two or three, it's a longer term strategy, you have to be aware of younger American players coming through. The MLR's role is, is not necessarily to develop American players, but a byproduct, a sort of um, unintended beneficial consequence of the MLR is it does grow American rugby. It does give that aspirational piece. So high school players can now go to college, uh, the better ones, and then the better ones there do have the legitimate shot at a professional rugby. Not great money at the moment, but it's a legitimate shot. There's starting to be a pathway. So for any MLR team, they do need to understand who the better, younger American players are and who's coming up, particularly in their own area. There is a designation with MLR for homegrown players. So you are incentivized that if you identify a player early, 
and they play for your academy, then they can be, if they play a sufficient number of games for your academy, they are ineligible for the draft. So if you if you spot somebody young, you can uh, potentially develop yourselves and there is an incentive to do that. So it becomes incumbent upon people like myself involved in player pathway pathways to um, identify these guys younger. You know, you brought up, so you, you, you mentioned that it was not the um, job of the MLR to develop, play, to develop American players. And there's another harumph going across the, the board, across the bars in, in America. And I actually agree with you on that. But what, what, do, you, what do you think? No, an argument. It's a professional league, and you're just going to try to win your games. In essence, that's your job. Yep. So Absolutely. what do you say to that argument? Is that it? Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a private business. It's a for-profit business. Um, it's not run, influenced, shaped in any way by USA Rugby. Um, obviously, there are, there are partnerships and you know, there are mutual benefits and synergies. But really, it's to the benefit of the national teams that MLR exists. But it's not the exclusive purpose of MLR to provide players to the national team. I wanted to know, you know, when you're speaking to these players, Steve, how do you value who they are as people as opposed to their skill on the pitch when you're trying to uh, d- decide how well they'll fit into a pro team? Like, is it just their skill and just what they do on the pitch or is it also who they are uh, as people and how they might fit into an organization as a person? There are three things, really. There are, you know, what they like as a rugby player. Probably more importantly, what is their potential as an athlete? And then the third piece of the puzzle, which I think you're alluding to, is uh, are they good citizens, you know? And particularly with younger American players, you've got to want it. It, It's not for everyone. You know, the the entry salaries or payments are are not big. You've got to hustle. You've got to have a work ethic like uh, Nate Augsburger, Ryan Matches, people like that who want to make it. So it's desire. It's being a good citizen allied to being a decent rugby player and having that athletic baseline, which is increasing every year in this league. Yeah. So, you know, I, I think I agree with you that it's not the MLR's uh, job to develop these players, but then I think that the, the next logical step in that is that it falls on the colleges to be developing these players at that young level. Uh, would you say that that's the case? And if so, what should these college programs be, be, you know, teaching these young athletes that would make them desirable for an MLR franchise? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one because, you know, there's a school of thought that when somebody comes out of college at 22 and 23, that it's almost too late, you know? Um, and, and do we need to be as they do in Europe? And they say, I, I hate the phrase, but if you say first tier countries, players, are, players are identified and in professional ranks much earlier, right? 1890. Um, in this country with our, with our sort of scholastic athletic model, you're right. Um, most of the development has occurred within the collegiate ranks up to now. I think what you'll see is, I know what you'll see, is um, MLR teams starting to um, flesh out their academies and develop their academies. Um, I think there'll be much more effort and uh, resources put behind that in the sort of next two or three years. Collegiate rugby is going great guns. You know, what NCR is doing is fantastic. There's lots of good young coaches out there, and that's kind of actually the critical piece probably. This country has a problem with coach education. Probably the biggest rugby problem is coach education. Um, and with, with the lack of bandwidth that the governing body, USA Rugby, has, uh, part of my remit locally is developing coaches. And that's also in the collegiate sort of sphere. So we, we've got we've to help collegiate coaches get better. Um, that's probably the most important thing. With that caveat I mentioned about um, it can't be the only development vehicle. We have to look at players elsewhere, different ways. And thus we have a place like the NCR All-Star event in Houston, which is just another example of how the game is growing in the United States. And on that note, Stephen, thank you for coming in. What's the most exciting thing that you can tell us about Rugby New York this season for 2022? I just got to look at that roster. Look at that roster. It's starting to... You know, we haven't tipped our hand like everyone did early on, as soon as you sign someone. But I think we're going to have a, you know, as I say, everyone thinks the league has gone up a notch. I think we've got up two notches. But it's that time of year when everyone involved in a team in any sport, you know, hope springs eternal. 
pre-season. Um, so I, I'm just excited to get going. First game, February 12th in Houston against the Sabercats. We have a bye the first week, so yeah, which is probably beneficial the way uh, weather and COVID's going. So all good. So how many points are you going to beat the Giltinis by in the final? <laughs> I'm not a betting man. <laughs> oh, oh, Smart answer. Smart all right. answer. All right. All right. On that note, I want to thank Mr. Stephen Lois, the GM slash director of rugby or something along those lines of Rugby New York, Mr. Colby Marshall, and Mr. Zach Lanning. I'm Matt McCarthy. Thank you. And please check out our bonus segment this week with Patty Prusmak, wife of the late great American rugby legend John Prusmak, on his legacy and the American landscape as she sees it now. And also sign up for our rugby wrap-up Red Cross blood donor team.